Let's get good. I am the gamer under development, and we are playing Endless Space 2 Awakening. We are playing as the lost worshipping relic hunting Nokalim, and let me tell y'all something. Science behemoths are 100. Uh, okay, so picking up where we left off last time, we've got people out hunting relics right now. Oh, really? Come on. So it looks like the Sophons have captured the Sisters of Mercy minor faction, so they're not going to be giving us resources anymore. Sad, sad times, y'all. Let's go ahead and see what else is going on, though. We do have some probes ready here on our hero. Gonna go ahead and fire those off and see what we can find here on Placidus. I'm gonna go here first. Hey, Blue Cap Mold. That's a nice little pickup there. Actually gives a nice little increase to the planet as well, which is good for us. Sure, that's fine. We like Blue Cap Mold. Let's put him to sleep so we can finish scanning down Placidus, though. There are a few more anomalies there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this quest that's come up. Lobbyists for your empire's banks have been assailing your senators for weeks with demands to ease some of the regulations on their operations. In particular, they're requesting looser restrictions on letting ordinary citizens in space travel ventures and on ensuring ships heading out for long-distance voyages. They promise increased financial gains for your empire with minimal risk to your financial future. Let me tell y'all something. Never trust the banks. Anyways, uh, Approve gives us plus 20 science on systems on Empire for 10 turns, but it also increases our pacifist ideology, and there is a 50% chance of creating a major economic crisis. Let's not. I'm gonna go with Deny here. The happiness will actually help us as well, because we've been struggling with that a little bit lately, and the plus 10% dust cost reduction on Empire will also give us a lot more dust, because it's gonna reduce the upkeep cost on everything in our Empire. I like that. Let's do that, because I really don't like the idea of creating an economic crisis. Uh, so that's going to happen. Just a card, Jai Parsha has leveled up. Let's go ahead and give her another point here in Optimal Operations. Which reminds me, this right here, Public Relations Expert, that is how we get more influence on half. So we're going to definitely be working towards that. Uh, the first one of our Overseer heroes that grabs that is going to get moved over to Hath, which will expand Hath's influence, hopefully around Edisir here, so that we can do a pacifistic conversion. The other option is to build a Temple of the Lost here on Hath, but as we've already seen, all of these are very nice planets that we don't necessarily want to give up in that way. I mean, really, if we wanted to, we could do it right here, just temporarily even. Okay, we're going to do it right there, just temporarily even, guys. We're going to do it right there because we kind of need to temporarily, temporarily. How much science will we lose if we do that, though? Oh, this isn't producing much of anything for science anyway. Okay, that's fine. We'll do that. Uh, we may lose a little bit of science there, which would be sad, but I really want to show the pacifistic conversion thing that they can do. So Temple of the Lost is now being built in half. Along with that, we have some ships waiting to move, including our fleet that is now boosted by a hero with a fleet booster. Woot woot. All right, let's get them moving. So they're still they're still not super fast, but this hero also hasn't leveled up to get his best seeker abilities yet. Perhaps soon, though. Perhaps soon. Uh, we do have an aspirant up here in Sophon space. We're going to go ahead and fire a probe off in this direction just to see what it'll uncover and then have him go down this other star lane. The goal, once again, is to just find all the relics like this guy. This guy found a relic. He's doing great. He is doing good work for our people. Uh, all right, political output here could be good to bump some stuff in here. What are the sowers actually giving us? Plus two food, minus depletion points. Not super useful right now. It may be worth looking at picking up some of these bonuses, though. Uh, like the Calgaro's bonus would be great if these resources probably weren't ridiculously expensive. However, boosting the Nakalim population would give us a lot of extra effects. So we should potentially, I don't think it actually doubles this, but it will double the happiness gain from Temples of the Lost, and it will double food. Maybe not then. I'd rather do the Zermsala at this point. Let's go see what we can do for picking up Red Sang off the market. Why, hello there, Red Sang. Why are you so expensive? It's Red Sang. It's not even worth it. Why is it so expensive? Okay, we're not going to bother with that. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. It's too, it's too rich for our blood. Uh, other than that, I think we're square, so we're going to go ahead and end our turn here. Very, very close to getting Climate Engineering. One turn out. Oh, we did have some diplomatic things we could have done that I missed out on, but we'll do those this turn. And our hack on Dill has succeeded. In case you've forgotten, Dill is this Empire system. And what we're going to do with that hack is once again put our points into unlocking an Overseer hero. 
I want to go ahead and take a look at our heroes panel for just one second here. So we are 93% of the way to unlocking a new hero, and I believe, if you look at that, if you look at that, we were in line to get another seeker, but by taking that boost to overseer points, we basically just ensured that we're a little higher on the overseer marker, which is great. That's what we want. We don't want another seeker. We already have two of those. We would rather have an overseer because they do greatly increase the output of systems. In this galactic hey, good to good to see that you want to be peaceable, Lumeris. I I really like you. You're kind of cool, except for wait. Okay, let's. That's an interesting little predicament here. We may be able to get some political pressure if they land here because we can uh, shoot at them. Hey, convenient that they landed there. I was wondering why we got the pop-up message, and that's it right there. They're like. Yo, we're sending one of our ships into your space. Please don't kill us. We're going to kill them. Uh, okay. Ghost of the Machine finishes. We lose this science penalty and hopefully discover something. Or did that already happen? That probably already occurred. Uh, hero level up for our main hero. Going to go ahead and give him that movement boost that I was talking about. We should see his fleet move a little bit faster now. Hopefully a lot bit faster soon. Oh no, that's a lot bit. That's three more movement points right there. So now he's up to 12 and look at that. That just greatly increased their movement capabilities. I love it. I love it. This is why Seeker heroes are great for leading fleets now. Uh, knock -a -limb population everywhere. That's good. Temple of the Lost is finished on half. Did that expand it enough? It did not. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Did we already give him a relic for influence? We did. We did already give him a relic for influence, darn. I was hoping that that might be a difference maker there, it seems not though. And Temple of the Lost does not seem to have improved our radius as much as I would have expected. I would have thought it would have given us a little bit more than a spin project, but it seems to not have potentially. Hmm. I don't know. It says it increases the growth, so it may actually take a turn to kick in as well, so we'll wait, we'll wait. We will wait and see. However, we do have this hero left who's got two probes now, so we should be able to finish scanning down Placidus. Why, hello there. What did we get? Dense atmosphere is nice. That's some extra food. And Hyperium. We like strategics. We like strategics a lot. We can sell strategics and buy other things that we like. Uh, let's go take a look at our political stuff here. Ooh, we have a lot of political options. Hey, here's an idea. Get your ships out of our space, buddy. Take them out. Uh, let's go see what we have with the Sophons. You as well, get your ships out of our space. Your fleets will be moved to the closest system. Okay, so that pulled them out of our space, and it reduces pressure from them on us. Same thing with the Sophons. And Riftborn, are you, you're also in the same situation. Why don't y'all just stay out of our space? Okay, so we have just told everybody to get out of our space. If we look, we should have decent pressure on everyone now. Yeah, we're building pressure on every empire. That's pretty good. Really want to get full pressure here so I can show you guys how the pressure system actually applies. Uh, this is alright. Once again, we didn't find using these economic grants too useful. However, we could also get one of these ships. Still doesn't seem worth it at the moment. Let's go ahead and send this hero over here to Hath because if I'm not mistaken, we do have a quest to finish there. Yes, we do. It's on Hath 4. Okay. You're going to come over here and do the quest on Hath 4, buddy. You do your thing. And then if we go ahead and have him rest until he gets a probe, we can move some of our other ships. Hey, we have discovered Kyros. Oh, and a battle. Uh, you're not going to fight. You're going to lose that, so we're just going to have you run away. That's fine. You're not out here to fight. You are just an exploration ship. And now that it's retreating, I'm going to actually have it wrap around this way so it avoids the pirates and continues its explorations. And then we're going to go and make sure that this guy is picking up the relic that he just landed on, as are these guys. More relics, everybody. All the relics. All the time. Regulus has some nice relics, too. We're going to have to send somebody over there to get that one. And Nakos as well, very, very soon. Do to do, do All right. Kyros is captured, or not captured, but found. Looking good. Let's go ahead and... Oh, we do need to start a hack. I forgot. We just finished a hack on Dill, so we're going to run another hack. I'm probably going to run this one to Dill as well, with the hope being that just in case our uh, examining of anomalies boosts our science gains and potentially puts a Seeker at the front again, we can sort of trump that and make sure that we get an Overseer. We don't want another Seeker, we want an Overseer. We are at the point where the goal is to start putting Governors on all of our systems. Okay, ending the turn. I do want to point out, because uh, somebody mentioned this on Reddit, 
I am just showing you guys one way to play the Nakalim. The fact that they start with such a wide toolkit means that you can play them pretty much any way you want. This is just the way that I feel follows their quest line the easiest. Uh, okay. The people are impressed and excited. The graffiti on the walls has even turned occasionally supportive. That's great. I am glad they are with me for the endgame begins. Alright, so we have unlocked evaporation inhibitors and climate engineering, which has given us access to relic exploitation sites, which is a plus three industry boost on Nokalim population. Holy moly, that's great. However, it does require Palladian? Palladian, I believe, which we don't have a ton of, so we may need to find a better source of that soon. My people will go forth, multiply, and thrive if I can provide them with the planets they need. I am their ruler and conscience. I will see that they get them. Terraform seven planets to fertile, zero out of seven completed currently, and that will give us access to the Relic Reliquary, which is an empire improvement on heroes that doubles the effect on relics assigned to resource production bonuses. So to be clear, guys, what that does, I'm going to go ahead and minimize a lot of these and we'll go back through them. What that does is it changes these bonuses from 10% to 20%, which is insane. That is absolutely off the hook insane. So we're going to go ahead and work on that. Speaking of which, we now have the ability to put one of our relics into dust because we did build another temple. Uh, so that's going to basically boost our dust quite a bit. You're going to see that pretty easily. Yeah, it just bumped up right there. Discovered this, uh, the home planet Hecum of the Sophons. And we have a probe waiting to finish the Hath quest. Let's do it. Hello, Hath. Show me what you have. The rescue party touches down on the planet close to the last site of contact. And what happens? The Lost Expedition Resurrection. Success! On the fifth day, the rescue party picked up a weak signal coming from a system of caves within the region that the original team disappeared. Upon investigation, they discovered the team surviving inside a Vodyani craft near the mouth of the caves. Although the crew gave conflicting accounts of what had happened and press or possessed equipment that was prematurely aged, they were found to be in fine physical and mental health. Weird, so they found like a time warp or something. After some simple repairs to the Vodyani craft, both the rescue party and the missing crew were able to leave the surface and return to the fleets. Insights gleaned from the whole affair have triggered a scientific renaissance across the Empire. Uh, okay, so we got plus 20 science on Empire, that's great. We also got increased scientific political ideology and a Vodyani ship. So, the Vidyani ship, realistically, we're probably just going to sell. Because we don't have much need for that at the moment. We're just going to dump it off. Uh, this hero right here, we may want to find something more interesting to do with. I may actually even assign him as a governor of a developing system, so that he can sort of take advantage of the gains of experience from it producing stuff. Although we could also use him to go look for relics, or pick up relics, rather. The problem with that, though, is that if we send him into enemy space to pick up relics, what he's actually going to do is end up getting attacked and killed, and that's not going to help us any. Uh, so I think that what we'll probably do here is just assign him to a system that does not have a governor. Something like Ida here that has a lot of things left to potentially produce. I mean, honestly though, Ida doesn't have a lot left to produce. <laughs> they're, they're mostly done. Let's take a look at some other systems. Placidus could be a better option, potentially. Yeah, Placidus has a little bit more to produce. It could be a much better option. However, the other option, and this is actually probably the smartest option, would be to assign him to a system like this, Bushir, and just start pumping out fleets. Just start pumping out fleets, pump out influence, pump out everything we can. Uh, so if we look at... I'm sorry, that's Adamantian, I've been calling it Palladian. Palladian is not a resource in this, that's, that's Endless Legend. Sometimes there's a little bit of overlap in my head. Apologies for that. Adamantian, which we are gaining four of per turn, so we are going to be able to build relic exploitation sites fairly quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get National Museum, or let's get relic exploitation sites, then National Museum, and then we're going to have some real fun and just pump out another 14 cheap eats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We may even consider putting the vault in queue up here, right there. That would give us additional experience on governors that are assigned here, which would be great, because it would allow that guy to basically pick up even more XP even faster. Uh, we do have a goal now to terraform seven planets to fertile, so if we start looking at terraformation options, we can go from ash to desert, which is not a fertile. So that's not really ideal for what we're trying to do. What about over here? We have a snow planet which can be made into a, there we go, into a boreal planet. 
which will provide us with a fertile. So we're going to start turning snow planets into boreal planets wherever we can. We have a steps here, which can be turned into a monsoon, which is not fertile, sadly. Uh, and we have a baron here that can be turned into an arctic, which is also not fertile. I don't know the, the actual planet terraformation charts for ES2 by heart. Like, I, I know them for ES1. ES1 had kind of a, a more simplistic flow to them. Let's see what we can do here. Toxic is not going to do it. Uh, how about you? Terraform to a desert. That's also not going to do it. This desert could potentially do it, but we don't have a terraformation process available for that. That may be because it's a temple to the lost. It may also just be because we don't have that. It's because we don't have that tech. Okay. Arctic is going to be sterile. That's not going to help us. Here we have the option to go from snow to boreal. That will help us. So we're going to put that in queue as well. Wow, the turns on these terraformation projects are insane. Tundra can be turned into a forest, which is fertile, or a boreal, which is fertile. So let's look at the different gains we get there. It seems like we get a lot more from going to a forest, so we're going to do that. Um, and we will find more places to do these wonderful terraformations at. This monsoon can go to being a, ooh, a forest or a terran. Forests look like they give us a little bit better bonuses, slightly less science, but that's okay. And man, it takes a lot of turns to terraform stuff. It really does. It's kind of insane. Uh, boreal here, so that'll be another terraformation. Or we could potentially look at these other ones and see if there's just better better terraforming available to them. Doesn't look like it, so we're going to go with a boreal here. So that's one. I think we should actually just go to this view. This is going to be the easiest way. One. Not there. Not there. Not there. Two. Three, four five terraformed fertiles so far. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Hath and see if they have something that can be terraformed. This is another great way to manage your empire once you start to reach later in the game is to just come in here and look at it. Uh, you're going to find things are a lot easier to sort of dig through here. Bogeli is not an option to terraform. That's okay. We don't want to. It's a great little planet. We don't want to mess with it. Uh, if we look here on Karana though, we have not done any terraforming on Karana, so if we have some options that take us to Fertiles here, that'll be a good idea. No such luck as of yet. We may be able to, like, terraform from one thing to another, then, then into a third thing that is a Fertile, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, I don't really want to be doing triple terraforming unless I absolutely have to. So, looking at Hath, I may have already looked here. Sorry, guys, terraforming is something I don't usually do a lot of. So when I'm being asked to do it for a quest like this, it can take me a second to kind of work my way through it. I do apologize for that, that brief delay. Uh, they've already got two terraforming projects. I think that's it. I don't think we actually really have a direct terraform to fertile on any other systems, which means that what we really want to be doing here is potentially grabbing the ability to get more systems. So I'm going to go ahead and look at some texts that are over in the Empire Development slot or Empire Development Wing, and I'm going to go for these higher grade military holes here. They're actually fine in the queue. We don't really need to rush them that much. And we will use those to kind of work our way up here to pick up the Culture Unshock, which will give us two more systems, and potentially use that to grab some systems that actually have more Fertiles in them. That would be ideal here. Uh, if we look at Gatria, what kind of planets do they have? Just out of curiosity. They have an Atoll, which is a Fertile, so that may not count for the terraforming thing. And a Baron, which I believe we can make into a Boreal, but I don't think so. I think Boreals are generally closed or cold planets based on what we've seen so far. There's also this system, Oentho, over here that we have not colonized that was very promising because it is a five-planet system. Hmm. Choices, 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 guys. It would be kind of good to get Oentho here, but like I said, we are currently over our, our expansion limit. We could push past that, but it does mean we're going to have to deal with a lot of negative happiness. So I don't want to necessarily do that right now. I think we'll work on getting those texts first. So this quest may take us a minute to uh, to explore, but that's okay. We have new Nocklin population everywhere. Everybody is doing the things, which is great. New science complete, working on extreme atmospherics now, which will give us access to antimatter capture and the ability to colonize gas giants. Colonizing gas giants is going to be huge for us because there is a gas giant here in Hath that we would love to colonize for no purpose other than to just go ahead and turn it into a temple, although we already did that here, I guess. 
Uh, I'm actually really surprised that that temple did not improve the the influence radius of our empire at all there. I do wonder, however, if building something like the National Museum here will expand, since these influence areas are tied together, if it'll expand this influence area out a little bit, it might actually do that to the point where I'm considering going ahead and rushing this. Let's do it. Let's, let's put some dust in that. Let's rush it. Got some more relics, of course. And let's see what happens with that. Okay, you have gotten a relic from Indusa. We're going to have you keep exploring down this way and see if you can find more relics. All the relics. Hey, look at that. Another relic. Love it. Get it. Good. Uh, okay. The Lumeris did land on our system. They're blockaded there. We're going to shoot them, guys. We're going to shoot them with the laser beams. Laser beams in the house. I should have changed the, the strategy, but I don't think it's going to matter. We're just going to melt these guys. Uh, and we are going to watch this space battle because we can. I am going to skip us to the action, though, and turn it up to probably two times speed. And then we'll just turn off the interface and enjoy the fireworks. God, that's beautiful. Just look at that. Lumeris are, they're like pelting the hole. We have projectiles. We have projectiles. And the behemoth is like, no, no, we don't care. We're about to beam you. I did uh, make a mistake by not using our maximum range here against it. Why are we not firing, though? There we go. I was like, did, did they just blow up our behemoth? I heard the crackling noise. And for a minute there, I was like, oh, man, they just they just popped our behemoth with a caravel. What just happened? Thankfully, that was not the outcome, because that would have been worse. Uh, oh, they're wary now. They're not happy with us for that. That's okay. That's okay. We don't mind. Um, Alright, Relic Hunter here. What are you going to do? We're going to send you over to our new friend, the Lumeris, and you're going to go get a relic from their space. Uh, that's what I was expecting. They want us to stop attacking, so if we accept that, we gain peace, uh, or rather pacifist, reputation or political influence, but we also reduce pressure. We want to increase pressure, so we're just going to refuse that. And now, okay, that's fine. You guys get more manpower on systems that are near ours. That's fine. I don't care. But if we come in here, we're going to see that we have plus 0.5 pressure from diplomatic choices. So that pressure is building a little bit faster, which is the main reason I wanted to do that. And let's go ahead and look up here. We have this aspirant up on Pisces. Looks like we may have reached the end of that particular rope. I'm going to have him go this way now, since we obviously did not discover any relics here. However, since he's stuck here, we may as well just have him kind of scan this down, right? Let's let's see what we can steal from the Sophons. Huh? Huh? what we get? Oh, look at that. That is a lovely little thing. Proto-Orchid is very nice. They have Proto-Orchid. We managed to steal five of it. That's not as much as we'd like. I'd like to have all of it, but... Unfortunately, that did not spawn on our empire, it spawned on theirs. Oh, uh-oh. Did we get that fleet? Okay, we did. I'm going to go ahead and sell that. I, I thought that fleet was like a spawned pirate fleet that was going to attack us. Thankfully, it was not. I'm going to go ahead and send him that direction now, as we discussed a moment ago, and end our turn. Come on, Kamos. Push that influence radius. Oh, they're in our influence radius. Do you guys see it? Do you see it? They are in our influence radius. I am super excited by that. And we did get an overseer. Unfortunately, he is a technologist overseer, which, if I recall correctly, means that his personal skills are not the greatest. Actually, that's pretty good. He gives us a lot of science. His low-tier personal skills are not great. But the fact that he's an overseer does give us access to beam counter, which is an incredibly powerful skill. So we're going to go ahead and take him without much of a doubt. We also have the option of grabbing a Nokalim Counselor, which wouldn't be terrible either. Uh, that will give us access to Prophetic Production, which is amazing. Uh, it does require us to make some alliances, though, which we don't have quite yet. So I'm, I'm debating here between these two. Plus 10% influence on system is huge here as well. Um, hmm. That is actually a very, very interesting choice. I think I'm gonna go with this guy because we we have a couple of counselors already. We do not have very many overseers, and now that we do have that new overseer, we're gonna put him somewhere that makes sense. So potentially, Ida, Bonnie, or Placidus. I think I'm gonna go with Placidus here, and the main reason is since we've discovered that things that share influence radius can boost each other's influence radiuses by putting him on Placidus and then coming in here and giving him a relic, we should be able to boost the influence on that area again which is incredibly powerful. I'm not going to go with food here. I'm going to go with food and production from Optimal Operations Expert. Go ahead and set that up, and he should be good to govern this system. We would like to put predictive logistics in queue here 
after these other things. Actually, before terraforming, for sure. And probably put some other things in front of that, even. Uh, the goal here, of course, is to get the terraforming, but once again, building production improvements should speed up that process quite a bit. So we're going to do that. Ooh, and I kind of want to colonize this. Dense atmosphere is not great for production, and Shattered Crust isn't either, but it will give us some extra food. Hmm. Let's do it. Let's put it in queue right there. Actually, let's do it and let's just buy it. <laughs> Alright, new heroes here. We've already done his level ups and stuff, so he should be solid. Kalin Fet Iska has gained enough experience to reach level 7, which is excellent. We're going to give him even more speed boosting because he is meant to be a fleet governor. But now that he, or a fleet admiral, now that he's level 7 though, we do meet the requirements for this quest. So as soon as possible, we'd like to reassign him to Kamos. The problem with that is that he was just assigned to Bushir, so I doubt he's going to be ready quite yet. We can take a look though and see how long we've got on that. Uh, he is... how many turns out? Three turns. Okay. We can wait three turns. That's not a big deal. Three turns we can move him there to complete that quest and advance along that quest line, which should be kind of cool. I'm actually really excited to see where that quest line goes. Faction under the influence of good. The sowers are now ours. They are under our influence. And here you can see that we have begun the process. We cannot afford 2375 influence to convert them quite yet, but we are working on that. I believe if we get up here and we grab this tech right here, allows absorption of systems within your empire's influence area over time, uh, that may reduce the cost, or there may be another measure that reduces the cost. I'm not sure where it is, though. And we thought we had learned to look, trust Look, look, we can take... Oh, here we go. Diplomatic demand basics. So we can basically... What we do here is if they refuse us, they get minus 15 to everything on all their systems except for influence for a very long time. So we could demand any resource we wanted right now, and they basically have to give it to us. Fortunately for them, we're not going to waste it yet because we want to get to the stronger level of demand that really, really increases the penalties for them. Uh, so we're going to wait on that just a second. Battle at Kuyos. Ah, here we go, y'all. This is it. This is what we have been waiting for. This is the real fleet battle. Although there's there's basically just these pirates and they're kind of junk. Uh, so once again, you can see that we're really strong at long range. We're going to go ahead and put ourselves on this one, which will give us dust and science for destroying enemy CP. And then we'll watch because they're not going to retreat. They're pirates. This is going to be beautiful, guys. This is going to be beautiful. I'm not going to speed it up. We're just going to turn it on and enjoy the fireworks. Uh, all right, let's do it. Do, do, do. This is going to be awesome. Because we have a huge fleet. It's like 14 ships. This is just going to be pretty to watch. I generally, when, when we're not watching it, I generally go into like overview mode because I do like to see the way that the ships move through patterns. And I find that helps you understand how the, the different fleet tactics work a little better, uh, a little bit better as well. Because you can see that the range is a combination of what they pick and what you pick in that format. But this is just pretty. Are you serious? You can't even get through to our, our hole. We have shields. You're done, son. Oh, just beautiful. That explosion was just gorgeous. I love it. I love it, Nokalim Combat Fleet. Away! I think that's it. I think we're done. Yeah, we are done. We wrecked them beyond all doubt. Uh, that was expected, though. We did get some nice dust and science from that. I mean, a little bit of science. It's not a huge amount, but it is something. We should actually look at our fleet options for our tactics here, because uh, there's some we're just not going to use. We're never going to want to go close like that. Even with the whole plating option, going close like that's just not going to be beneficial to us. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is. So we'll switch to gravity distortion real quick, because that will give us some whole penetration if they do have a ton of armor. And then, these guys are already doing their thing. We're kind of sieging this system now. We could realistically invade here, uh, unfortunately, because we haven't put any, any manpower into tanks. We're going to have some trouble there if we try. So I'm going to go ahead and change this real quick. I don't think it'll change on the fly for that fleet, but if it does, that'll be really nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and boost the health of our ground troops as well. I mean, honestly, with as much dust as we have, we could probably get away with doing that. Because we have a ton of Hyperium and Titanium as well. Yeah, we can do that. Let's just do it all. That'll be great. That'll make those troops a lot quicker at invading on the ground. And now we're going to come in here and make sure that there are no non-combat heroes we want to scoop up. There are not. 
sad times because I would have liked to have picked up another hero there. Influence generation once again becoming a bit of a, a concern for us. We do want to generate more so that we can give Edisir to the Academy within time before somebody else gets them. Um, one thing we can do that will help, though, is once one of our hacks finishes, we're going to levy a hack on Edisir because we can reduce the amount of influence that another major faction has with them, which can potentially put the Lumeris in a place where they cannot absorb this empire. And that's fine. We really don't want them to absorb that empire. We want them to leave that empire alone so that we can get this. Uh, in the meantime, though, I do want to look around and see if there's anything else we can do to kind of boost our influence gains all over. See, I'd rather do that, for example, than get the terraform right away. Uh, over here, we would much rather do this than the Vault of Governments, which we really don't need anymore. And then, in fact, like, realistically, what we should be doing here is we should be looking at places where we can make enough dust to rush that stuff. Now, I'm not sure how many turns we have till our next election. Four turns. Okay, so we've got a few turns. We're generating 2.7k dust. We're kind of in a decent spot. I'm going to see if we can maybe sell some things off in order to generate a little extra dust. That's We're not getting enough for those for that to be worth it. Uh, let's look at what the highest priced luxury resources are right now. Red Sang is one of them, which is, that just blows my mind. Red Sang is usually one of the cheapest resources on the market. And for some reason right now, they're like, Red Sang, man, that Red Sang is hot. Like, we need that Red Sang. Uh, Strategic-wise, we actually don't have as much to sell as I would think, and that's because we just used a bunch of it. But we could still sell some of it. It's not going to get us enough, though. So maybe we'll just wait a turn to start buying out influence stuff. But we, we're definitely going to look at buying out influence stuff in the near future to help us generate more influence and potentially get that minor faction for the academy that is going to be it for this one though thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the show if you did make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time bye